What's the date? I'd like to go ahead and call the Tuesday, August 6th meeting to order. If we would all rise, our invocation and our pledge will be done by our city attorney, Mr. Tom Trask. Heaven, we seek blessings on the tasks before us. Bless our efforts with clear insight, our deliberations with wisdom, our work with clarity and accuracy, and our decisions with impartiality. We gather to make decisions for our community. May we use only our best skills and judgment, keeping ourselves impartial and neutral as we consider the merits and pitfalls of each matter that is placed before us and always act in accordance with what is best for the city of Oldsmar and our fellow citizens. This we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you once again and welcome. Um, our first item tonight is our citizens open forum. It gets you a chance, gives you a chance to address the council. Um, we just have a couple of rules. We ask that you do not address anything that's on tonight's agenda. We ask you to keep it note to no more than five minutes and please state clearly your name and address for the record. Having said that, anybody on this side would like to address the council? Awesome. And this side. Time's up. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, I want to do something. I was going to save this till um, council comments, but I want to do it while everybody's here because oftentimes people uh, leave. We all put a lot of extra time and effort into our jobs, you know, that goes unrecognized. And um, I would like to take a second and acknowledge our uh, city attorney, Mr. Tom Trask, who's been with us for quite some time, but really puts a lot of time and effort in. Uh, to making sure that we run great and he just got his board certification in city county and local management or local government law and we know that that takes a lot of time and uh, it benefits us and the other cities that he works for so I would like to give Tom a big round of applause. Um, our first item is our consent docket. We have four items. Approve the minutes of the June 4th 2013 city council meeting. Also approve work order number seven with Jones Edmond and Associates to complete the water reclamation facility operating permit renewal. Item number three, approve purchase of shelter off the Manatee County school bid from Miller Recreation Equipment and Design Incorporated from Morbley Bayou Wilderness Preserve North Support Area Environmental Education Center. And number four, approve waiving bid requirements for purchase of an access control expansion system and hardware from A Total Solution Incorporated for this facilities division uh, does anybody wish to pull anything? I just have no, I don't, I, but, but I would just like the city manager to take about a minute and a half and explain the fourth, Number four. the, the fourth one because that doesn't explain it to anybody. I, we all got briefed on it, but yeah, if you want to go ahead and do that, that'd be great. Sure. Number four is uh, access control system and hardware. It's uh, controls access to a number of city facilities, including. City Hall, this building, the library, and uh, the gates at both the reverse osmosis water treatment plant and the water reclamation facility. The, uh, currently, we have separate systems at each of those locations, so they're not compatible. And uh, the A Total Solutions, the recommended vendor here, is who supplied the system at the reverse osmosis water treatment plant, so that's the newest of these. And to be compatible citywide, um, that's why we're recommending the bidding requirement be waived and we buy from this vendor. Uh, and then each employee will be issued a new ID card and that will give them access to the facilities they need to go to. So that's, that's kind of what it is. You got a motion. Motion, got a second. second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. I approve five nothing. Thank you. And our next item is the city of Oldsmar, and it's the presentation of the Homer Brunson Ward Schreckengoss Government Award. And since we don't have our video ready, if Mr. Beaverlin would be so kind, I know you don't feel that great, but to tell us what that's about. The Homer Brunson Ward Schreckengoss Award was a was an award that was initiated in 1990. And it served two purposes. It served the purpose of recognizing Ward Schrettengoss, who was mayor of the city of Osmar for 16 years, way back yonder when it was, when there was no money. And for Homer Brunson, that served on the council for 14 years, 
and one year as mayor, uh, Homer actually died in office. And uh, these two guys, I, I always have to say this, these two guys were mortal political enemies. One was a diehard Republican, and the other one was a diehard Democrat. And in 1970, when I was first elected, I am older than dirt, thank you. <laughs> when I was elected in 1970, I sat between these two. That year and a half, two years, was an education that everybody that sits on this council should have went through. Those two taught me so much of what not to do, what not to say, and when not to say it. But it serves another purpose, the award Shrek and Goss Homer Brunson Award, to keep those two names in the forefront. But the award goes to, a, uh, uh, goes to an employee that is chosen by their peers. And we do this four times a year, right, Mayor? Four times a year. And so their peers choose the incredible employee to receive this. And tonight, you will call her up. We have an incredible employee that was chosen by her peers to receive this award. And we all love her. Yes, we do. <laughs> oh, I thought we were giving it to Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> No, that, that kind of words could be said about Kathy. Um, the award is for all of her effort um, that she put into our Relay for Life team uh, that we do over at Canal Park. And she uh, put a lot of effort into making 12 baskets that got raffled off and raised a lot of money for um, for Relay for Life for our team. And, and she does a lot of other things that go unseen and seen. And uh, uh, it's great to bring Kathy up here, please. She does. She does. Promise, didn't she promise not to cry? <laughs> she's, she's not going to cry. But uh, it is great. And it, as uh, Jerry said, it's, it's a really neat award because it's nominated by the employees of the city of Oldsmar. And, you know, they don't take that lightly. And um, we have a lot of great employees. But this one is, I'm excited about this. <laughs> You're awesome. And uh, um, you do a lot of things for the city. But uh, the, the Relay for Life thing was awesome. So we have a check for you. Ooh. <laughs> Money. You actually get this. We don't give that to Steve. <laughs> and uh, you get a, an extra day off. And I hope you use it well. I'm on your Facebook, so it'll probably include a picture of you on a balcony of a hotel at a beach somewhere, I'm thinking. <laughs> and the, the award says, Homer Brunson Ward Shrek and Goss Governmental Award presented to Kathy Horvath for her outstanding service, dedication, and leadership to the City of Oldsmar 2013 second quarter. Why don't you bring up your your your, your other hand? Yeah. Steve, come up here. Yeah. And you don't get to check. Oh. <laughs> I got the um. deposit ticket on made out of it. <laughs> well, I just wanted to say thank you so much. I had a ball putting these baskets together. It was a lot of fun. And the relay for life this year actually fell on my dad's birthday. So it was a really good way for me to honor his memory. That's awesome. So. Yeah. And we're starting again for next year. I already so. saw the basket. Yep. <laughs> yes. Congratulations. Oh. Yes. It's about time she gets this. Again, congratulations, Kathy. Our next item is our city attorney. Yes, Mr. Mayor, um, council members, item number six on your agenda is the second final reading of public hearing of ordinance 2013-13. I'll read that by title only. Ordinance 2013-13, an ordinance declaring the intention of the city of Oldsmar, Florida, to annex a parcel of real property located in section 22, township 28 south, range 16 east, further described as 3133 Huron Avenue, into the corporate limits of the city of Oldsmar providing for an effective day of this ordinance. That was the second and final reading of ordinance 2013-13 by title only. Um, this is a public hearing. Does anybody from the public wish to address this particular item? Seeing no one, 
we'll close that portion of it. Uh, any comments by council? No, I'm just no? glad. Yep, glad. I need a motion. It's so move. Need a second. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. Oh, roll, roll call. Oh, roll call. Oh, roll call. <laughs> Councilmember Beaverland. One at a time. Yes. Vice Mayor Miller. Aye. Councilmember McKee. Yes. Councilmember Norris. Yes. Mayor Beavis. Aye. Yes. Second and final reading of Ordinance 2013-13, annexing 3133 Huron Avenue is adopted with five votes for and zero against. The next item on the agenda, item number seven, second and final reading of public hearing of Ordinance 2013-14. I'll read that by title only. Ordinance 2013-14, an ordinance of the City of Oldsmar, Florida, rezoning five parcels of real property located north of Tampa Road, east of Pine Avenue North, and south and west of Hayes Road, from RM15 Residential Multifamily District to RM15 Residential Multifamily District with Planned Unit Development Overlay, PUD Overlay, District Zoning Designation, and providing for the effective date. That was the second and final reading of Ordinance 2013-14 by title only. This again is a public hearing. Does anybody wish to address this item either for or against? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing. I need a motion. Here, uh, so moved. I need a second. I'll second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Nope. nope. Hearing no discussion, please call the roll. Councilmember Beaverland? Yes. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Councilmember McKee? Yes. Councilmember Norris? Yes. Mayor Beavis? Aye. Second and final reading of Ordinance 2013 14, establishing planned unit development overlay zoning for Hayes Park Cottages, is adopted <coughs> with five votes for and zero against. Okay, next on your agenda, item number eight, first reading and public hearing of Ordinance 2013 16. This is the ordinance that amends the land use from residential low and preservation to residential low medium and preservation uh, for the Tuscany Woods North parcel located at the northwest corner of Forest Road and Pine Avenue. Um, and we're gonna use this as a Snyder hearing today. I'll read that ordinance by title only. Ordinance 2013-16, an ordinance of the city of Oldsmar amending the land use designation on that certain real property described as a vacant parcel of property <coughs> located on Pine Avenue North with a parcel ID number of 11 28 from residential low and preservation, RL and P, to residential low, medium and preservations, RLM, RLM and P, and providing for an effective date. That was a reading of ordinance 2013-16 by title only. It requires a public hearing and st staff should make the presentation to start. <coughs> Um, I need to go ahead and swear in anybody that's going to go ahead and testify for this. Anyone that wants to speak tonight on this particular issue, if you could stand up, raise your right hand, and I'll swear you in. This is on just this particular agenda item. Yeah, right. this is just for the land use portion, and um, you can remain standing. Um, uh, actually, you'll, this this oath will uh, be good for the next two or three ordinances if you want to talk about those also. So, do you? If everybody wants to stand at one time, if you're going to speak on any of these ordinances that are coming up, we'll just swear you in all at the same time. Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give in this proceeding is going to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. And um, you can be seated, please, and the city staff will make a presentation. Uh, so there's one other person I want uh, that needs to stand up. She? Oh. She needs the same. You need to be sworn in, Lisa? You swear that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth in this proceeding? Okay, thank you. Marie? Um, Marie Daphne, Planning and Redevelopment Director. Um, we've got a little PowerPoint. Okay. Um, just as a background, in May 2013, the Oldsmar City Council approved an agreement for the sale and purchase of a 3.32 acre city owned property. <coughs> It's north of Forest Lakes Boulevard and west of Pine Avenue North uh, to BVK Tuscany Woods LLC. The agreement is contingent on BVK Tuscany Woods LLC acquiring site plan approval from the city to develop single family townhome development on a 9.88 acre site um, currently owned by the Fresh Start Community Church and also the city owned property. This request is for a land use um, amendment from residential low and preservation to residential low uh, medium and preservation. And the applicant is BVK Tuscany Woods LLC. Okay. Um, this is a location map and this, um, right now we're um, discussing the north property. 
the outlined property in the south is also part of a um, well, another uh, ordinance that's coming up, and it's related. The developer is going to develop both of those parcels. So this north property is located north of the intersection of Forest Road and Pine Avenue North, and it's bordered by the Progress or Duke Energy Power Line to the north, and Cypress Lakes Recreation Center to the east, and southeast is the Westminster um, Apartments. The main house of Forest Lakes subdivision is located to the west, the woods of Forest Lakes is located to the south, and um, both are residential plan developments with residential low land use. And here's an aerial photo. Um, it shows that the property is separated from the single family um, detached subdivision to the west and south by wetlands. So you can see that on the aerial. And this <coughs> provides significant buffering both visually and through the separation distances. Uh, the residential low medium land use is provided on the Cypress Recreation Center and Water Spray Park to the east, as well as the um, Westminster um, Apartments to the southeast. And here's a picture of the site. It's looking north, northwest from the corner of Pine Avenue North and Forest Road. So this request for a land use amendment from residential low to residential low medium, um, you can see that the residential low medium um, permits units up to five units per acre. The resident, I mean, excuse me, residential low permits up to five units per acre, and the residential low medium will double that and permit up to 10, 10 units per acre. And that's a picture of the land use map. You can see that it is um, consistent with the properties to the east. Um, the survey of the property shows the, um, identifies the wetland area and the uplands. Um, it contains 4.47 acres of wetlands with preserva preservation land use. And the applicant um, is proposing to build 54 townhomes on the upland portion. Uh, the proposed residential low medium land use up to 10 acres will um, permit the applicant to provide a 54 lot single family attached home subdivision on the upland portion while ma maintaining the undeveloped wetland portion of the property. Um, I included this slide about drainage. There was some discussion about drainage on, at the planning board meeting. So this kind of goes over all the um, reviews and the regulatory authorities that would review the drainage. And um, if you need more um, expansion on this, I'm sure Lisa Ray can help you with that. Um, with regard to transportation, primary access is to the project is via Pine Avenue North to Forest Lakes Boulevard. Um, and term, um, Pine Avenue North terminates just north of the site at the gated southern uh, maintenance access into Burger Creek. And so there's no developments located north of the site. Uh, Forest Lakes is a two-lane county road to the south, Pine Avenue to Hillsborough County uh, line, and four lanes to the southwest, Tampa Road to Pine Avenue. And the four-lane segment is operating at a level of service C, uh, the two-lane segment at a level of um, service F, and four La Forest Lakes Boulevard um, continues to be scheduled to be widened to a four-lane in the future. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see that the um, residential land use is expected to generate 14 um, peak hour trips and the residential low medium land use is expected to generate 28. So it was really not significant. Um, this is a uh, slide of the master development plan. It shows that the um, plan community will have three bedroom single family attached townhomes. They'll range in size from 1,500 square feet to 1,800 square feet, plus a garage and lanai. Um, each unit will have a one-car garage and additional visitor parking has been located inside the development. Um, there we have an aerial and they superimpose the uh, master development plan on that. And this is the, a rendering of the townhome units. And this amendment is consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the Oldsmar Comprehensive Plan, specifically housing objective 1.1, the city shall assist the private sector in providing a suitable mixture and number of housing types to meet the city's housing needs. Um, future land use policy 1.2.4. Residential land use shall be encouraged through provisions contained in the LDC and future land use policy 4.1.3. The city shall encourage the use of innovative land use regulations. So this request for a land use amendment was reviewed against the standards out outlined in section 3.14.4 of the Land Devel Development Code 
And based on that review, staff is recommending the approval of the land use amendment from residential loan preservation to residential low medium and preservation. And at the July 10th, 2013 um, meeting, the motion to rec uh, the planning board um, submitted a motion to, re to recommend that the city council authorize the city attorney to prepare an ordinance amending the land use from residential low and preservation to residential low, medium, and preservation. And this motion failed. Um, the vote was zero to six. So I'd like to enter the staff report into the record at this time and answer any questions that you have. Any questions at this time? Uh, yes, I do. I don't know if this is the right time to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. The, uh, there's a portion of this that uh, that kind of works backwards for the council. Uh, if we okay this site plan tonight, or actually it comes back for another. Right. We're not. You're not considering the site plan tonight. It's just the land use. Just the land use. Land use. Just the land use. Yeah. You want to hold off on well, that? Now, correct me, Tom, because I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going to deviate a little bit. By doing this, by doing this, and it, and it passes again on the second reading, it never comes back to this council. It never comes back to this council. So we have to rely on staff to, uh, to implement everything else that comes in afterwards that the council has no say so at all in. And I somehow, I, I don't know if we can change that. I think it should be changed because one of the main things here, in my opinion, is redoing the site, the site plan, right? Is that we're altering the drainage systems off this land. And the council has nothing to say about that. After it, after we, uh, after we okay. do what we're going to do. So what I want to do, I would like Lisa to come up here, if if it's possible, and I want to and I want to put something on the record for at least Jerry Beaverlin. Uh, what, what I want to do is. It, it is put everybody on notice that when we do this, when we do this, we're altering, we're altering the drainage systems on the property, mm -hmm. which we've done many properties here, which, which is not a bad thing. If staff does what they're supposed to do, so what I want to do is, is, is put it on record for the developer. And for staff, and, and for the council's benefit, don't put one ounce of water on another development. Am I right? Without an agreement. Well, it drains into what is considered a private stormwater system. So there would have to be some kind of agreement between this developer for the water to drain into a private stormwater system. Okay. I That's nothing. I mean, if it drains into the city stormwater system, the city is is taking the responsibility at that time. I just want that on the record that uh, that's something I didn't really realize in times past that you cannot put your drain your, or, or your water on somebody else's pond over here unless you have an agreement. So I just want to put that on record for the, for the developer, okay. for staff. And if I could, if I don't, if I was a drainage engineer for many, many, many years and- A uh, good one. Yeah, a good one. And um, that's partially true, but if you can demonstrate through um, basin divides, you know, let's just say you divided it up into a, four pieces of pie, and if five drops of water went this way, and five went that way, and five went this way, and five went that way, you are allowed by rights to still continue to drain that water in that direction, but no more than that. But no more right. than that. No right. more than that. Now we got. Yeah, uh, it, it it has to. Part of the review is, and we do not have plans yet for stormwater. And that's one of the problems I'm I'm running into. Go ahead. 
because at this point, the plan that we have received is very conceptual. It does show the concept of where the pond is going to go and what they're proposing, but we have none of the calculations, none of the modeling information, none of the details that go into the design of a stormwater system. And all of that will be provided to us during this site plan approval process. But not to the council. And, 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 and to me, right, that's a problem. That's a problem I have, yeah. that the council like doesn't even see any of this. And unless he, individually we get involved in it, which I've done for the last 25 years. <laughs> the, the, uh, what, what does SWIFT mud have to do with this? That does, don't they have something in Yes, right there? There, there is a SWIFT mud permit that will be required. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. If we can just, because this is way off of, this is just a land use. It's only a land use that has nothing to do with site plans. It's only land use, okay. So, because part of this, a part of this drainage now on this land, on the land use, part of this drainage now goes across sure. uh, but that, for, Forest Road. But that, that issue is an issue regardless of if we do anything tonight or not. It's an issue. But I just want to put everybody on record. Don't put any more water on anybody else than what's going there right now. Am I right? Yeah, and you're right. And in answer to that, years and years ago, the reviews weren't nearly as thorough as they they are you know now, and and people are you know, a lot more educated on stormwater and stormwater models and things like that. So th I'll agree with you. Things were done you know not deliberately incorrectly, but incorrectly they in the past. Done. But again, that's a site plan issue and not really a land use issue, and it's something that's got to be addressed on every project. I just th thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to and Tom and the city manager. I just and the council. Okay. I just wanted that on record. So everybody understands where at least I'm coming from. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Any other questions from Marie about the land use? And I see the applicant is here. Would the applicant like to address the council? Yeah, I'd like to hear. And again, let's let the applicant complete his. If we have questions, write them down and we'll ask him at the end just so he can stay on point. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, for the record, my name is Pete Pensa. I'm a certified planner with AVID Group. We're the uh, agent and the planner's engineers on the project. Uh, with me, I have Richard Kelly, who is the uh, engineering project manager, uh, as well as Chris Conkle, who's with the developer, the buyer of the property. Uh, it's kind of, as, as uh, Mr. Irwin pointed out, it is kind of a complex issue because there's really three items that are before you tonight. There's a land use amendment and then a rezoning on two different parcels. Is it the pleasure of the board or would it be appropriate to give a presentation on the overall now or do you want me just to stick to just the land use issue? On Let's just stick moment? to the land use issue if we could. Okay. Uh, I just don't want to clutter it right. for others because that's really what we're talking about is the land I, I agree. Use. I thought that's what you want to do. I want yep. to make sure. Uh, as a planning board, we, we went ahead and presented it all at once sure. to make it easier for them to understand comprehensively. <clears throat> I mean, simply stated, we, we concur with staff's review. Uh, in your packets was a copy of our analysis. I did a very detailed review, walking through every one of your code and comprehend, comprehensive plan criteria for the review of the land use amendment. Uh, in that, I, I, I did the impact analysis showing at the maximum density, what the impacts would be on the roads, on water, on sewer, on parks. And they're, they're pretty minimal impacts. The services are available out there. Uh, the only one I would touch base on just for the, the benefit of, of everyone is the traffic. Uh, the amount of traffic uh, generated by this, and this is for the full amount of land use amendment, uh, would be only 0.58% of the traffic uh, that's currently on Tampa Road and 1.6% of the traffic on Forest Lakes Boulevard. It's a pretty, obviously a pretty minimal amount. It's a drop in the bucket on the traffic that's out there today. Half of that is already factored in as assumed for development because of the land use allow it's on there currently they are allowing five units an acre so, so just for clarification you're talking about the total uh even with the change but there's already some that's permitted under the current land use correct so the, yeah, the actual difference is less than the 1.6 is what you're correct saying. it's half okay. of that okay so so it's a, it's a real minimal amount both for in terms of reality the full project plus when you look at even small, more narrowly at the land use amendment aspect of it, it's even less. It's not even, you know, it's basically 0.8%. Okay. So it's, it's a small amount. Water, sewer, parks are there. There's a city park right across the street for people to walk to. Uh, the land use designation itself is compatible with the area. There's residential low medium immediately across the street, and there's residential low medium development, uh, apartment complex, Westminster, 
apartments located to the southeast corner of the property. So it is a consistent pattern with the area. And then further southwest, uh, on the other side of some of the single family that's across the street to the southwest of it, there's additional residential low medium in the area too. So it's definitely an existing pattern for the area. We feel it's consistent and we've well documented the reason for consistency with the city's uh, comp plan and code criteria for the land use amendment. And then we'll get into more detail when we get to the to the PD zoning portion. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, any questions of the applicant at this time? I just want to make sure that we're clear. Um, did you want to submit your staff, your, your report uh, in, into evidence for the council as well? Yes, we would. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Nope. Uh, thank you. And this is a public hearing. Um, we have quite a few people here, so I'll start with the proponents first. Um, because there are so many people, we normally give five minutes, but we're going to limit it to three minutes so everybody can get a chance to talk. And we're only speaking right now on the land use. If you're objecting to the change of the land use from its current to what's being proposed, we'll get into the zoning in the next two items. Anybody wish to speak as a proponent in favor of this item? No. Any opponents that would like to address this particular item at this time? I just have a, Joe Coble, 573 Lakewood Drive. Question on what's it zoned for now? That pocket. It, this is private property we're talking about, this Snyder parcel, is that correct? What's it zoned for now? What, what can be put there now? Marie, would you like to address that? So that it's clear? You want to know zoning or? I just want to know what. It's zoned it's for think, residential uses. Any kind right of now, it's single the whole thing is residential for yes. single family. So, okay. And preservation. Okay, because I heard there was going to be a church put there at one time. Was that correct? Yes, but that's church permitted by conditional use there. Okay, how many parking spots were going to be there on a Saturday or Sunday for church? Did anybody figure that out? Or, we, had a big point be? point because we had a concept plan. I just don't recall. Yeah, okay. it never got. Yeah, it's a never got. Point. Okay, so right now we're talking about either 30 units or 54 units because at the, at the development meeting they said you really can only put 30 units there, I believe. Ooh. Is that correct? 54 towns. 54, you were asking for 54, and they, and they only really said about 30. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Anybody else? Opponents? Go ahead. Uh, Brandy Fetter, 569 Lakewood Drive, Oldsmar. I, I'm opposed to the rezoning of this because I this think- This isn't the rezoning, this is the land use. The land use, I'm, I'm opposed to that because I'm, I just, you know, what we see going on in the, in the area now is, is a lot of uh, different things being shoehorned in. I'm afraid if it gets changed, it's going to, if this doesn't pass, something else will go in that's be less desirable. So I'm just I'm just opposed to it because and I don't I still don't know how the <laughs> water's going to drain when they put all these rooftops and the concrete and the asphalt there. I have a feeling that the water is going to back up in all the other developments. I'm really concerned about that because if you get down, down Pine Avenue with a little bit of rain we just had this afternoon, there's water laying in the ditch now, mm -hmm. and it doesn't drain away right away. You know, and that starts there, and then it follows through the pond and all the way through the other. So, sure. and I anyway. appreciate that. And, and again, this this uh, your point needs to be addressed, whether this change is made or not. Whatever goes in there, obviously, has to address that to the satisfaction of staff and to all the permitting agencies. And again, I'll reiterate that the permitting agencies are far better now than they were years and years ago when Rutland put in homes and things like that. I well, definitely. we got a first class example of, of what they did wrong <laughs> in where we live, so. No. Nope. Okay, thank point, you. Point made, thank you. Anybody else? Seeing nobody else, I'll close the period. I'm sorry, apologize. Love it. I'm at uh, 412 Lakewood Drive in the woods of Forest Lake. Mm -hmm. I'm also our, one of the HOA board members and um, I personally went around to at least a third of the homes and residents in our subdivision, and not one person, one house, was in favor of the usage of this land um, going to townhouses. I mean, if it has to have something into it, better the 30 individual homes than the many more population that would be... Um, in, in this particular uh, land area. Um, I just want to share with you, though, uh, collectively the concerns that every one of those residents um, shared with me as their board member. And I'm speaking for myself, but I'm also speaking for them as their representative. Um, Excuse me, just for clarity, them as the board or them as the residents? The residents. Okay. Um,
you've brought up the drainage issue. Uh, that is very concerning because the residents I spoke to are dealing now every, as uh, the previous speaker indicated, every time there's a heavy rain, they've got water issues backing up in the cul-de-sacs from the wetlands and so forth. Um, more population would just cause more of that type of issue, um, having a negative impact on the additional runoff. Um, a lot of concern about the loss of the wetlands, the impact to the wildlife. Our kids are sitting outside and um, grown-ups are sitting outside um, enjoying the cardinals and the hawks. And uh, just every morning on my lanai, I personally sit there and see all the wildlife. Our fear is that that part of the, our quality of life is going to go away. Um, I want to speak to the tra traffic congestion. Um, I personally, as long uh, with other residents who shared their stories with me, I have sat through five light changes to get out of Forest Boulevard onto Far uh, Forest Road onto Forest Lake Boulevard. It's crazy. And now we're going to add 52 more homes to that mass. That's just nuts. And if you don't know, if you've never been over there, just come come along any day. And it isn't just it isn't just business hours or high traffic times. It's all the time now. Mm -hmm. um, and there's been a definite um, feel of insecurity in more vandalism, more um, um, strangers walking through the subdivision, people that we've never seen before because of more population out of the apartments that were built, the Westminster apartments. We're fearful, and those residents are fearful, that that's just going to be increase with more population going in there. So um, I can have you just wrap that up real quick. OK, that, that, that's my last point. I just wish I, the residents wish that, you know, if worst case scenario, if we can't push down <laughs> not having anything in that area, but worst case scenario would be less homes than the townhouses. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. And we're going to get the applicant to come up, come up and address some of the drainage issues in a couple of minutes. Okay. Thank you. Any other proponents? Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Opponent. Sorry. <laughs> I try it again. No. Hi, I'm Craig. My voice doesn't work. Please bear with me. That's okay. Uh, Craig Collins, uh, 415 Lakewood Drive. Um, more of a question, but I had heard that there was going to be mitigation property involved. And if so, uh, it is my understanding that if property is harmed here, where the mitigation can be done could be anywhere in Florida. So if it's true that there is mitigation involved here, I'd hate to see that we're paying the price here while somebody else gets to benefit who knows where. That will never happen. No, no, Hold on. no. That will Hold never happen. No. Hold on. That's, go ahead. And we, I can have uh, Lisa address that, or I can even address some of that, but go ahead. Okay, that was that was my question. I, I just didn't want to see uh, more damage done here while somebody else gets to benefit that we pay the price mm -hmm. for some someplace else. Okay, that was my concern. You're, and you're talking specifically about impacts to the wetlands as far yes. as mitigation. Is that yours? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So what he's talking about is that they're going to use property somewhere else to yeah. mitigate this. Yes. And that's not going to happen. No. Okay. Thank you. So Tyson Munson, 510 Pinewood. This is kind of a two-part story because the impact that this and this change is going to make, but nobody's really mentioned the impact on Forest Road. You keep saying pine. Ladies and gentlemen, nobody uses that. Majority of Westminster uses forest. So we get a lot of woods of Forest Lakes waiting. So the traffic impact to also think to come in, but major mainly we're fortunate right now that this is vacant. And, you know, we are going to have to address that there will be some some kind of a development there. But if you look at this partial from Forest Boulevard and, and north, our drainage runs that way because of elevation. And look at the elevation on Forest. We have a drainage issue from the front side of Forest Lakes Boulevard and Forest Drive. OK, it starts there with city property onto our property because we share it. 
goes all the way around and down. So my point is that this here with this property and all the other, this needs to be addressed. And I hope today you consider whatever impact is here and whatever goes here, you already have a pre-existing problem. As you mentioned, rotten homes. And unfortunate, I'm part of the rotten home damage because I got video for you later to let you see the drainage. But ladies and gentlemen, this is gonna have impact all the way around. And I'm not against some development for the city of Oldsmar to grow, but you have to address the existing impact problems that are there. Forest Drive, from the top of Forest Lakes Boulevard and Forest Drive, and the lake that is there that's currently part of, um, my mom used to live there and you would think I would know the name of that, but I don't know the subdivision that's there. It's the- Forest Lake. No, it's the, it's the townhomes. townhomes on the left. There's that huge rain off, runoff there. Follow the drainage. I've done my research. I also am in development myself. I do site plans and understand. And I would have never bought my home today, and I'll tell you that, if I would have known what I know now, then. So I'll see you soon again on the next issue. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Any other opponents? Those opposed? Seeing nobody, I'll close the public hearing staff. Would you like to address council? No further. Lisa, could you address potentially? I think the applicant. The applicant right. could address the drain. If you could address the drainage, that would be great. Do we ask questions after this? Yeah. Well, you can ask him questions when he's done. Okay. We really haven't closed the public hearing until okay. they're done. Right. Okay. okay. What page is that that you're showing them? Page three, the horizontal control plan. Kind of reiterate what Lisa was saying that. Um, we need your name and address, please. Richard Kelly, the uh, project manager with the Avid Group, 2300 Curly Road, Palm Harbor. I uh, just wanted to reiterate what Lisa was saying that, that by Oldsmar's code as well as Swift Mud, we can't add any additional water to the systems. Um, what we're doing now is the existing drainage pattern, kind of the ridge line kind of bisects the site. A portion of it goes into the wetland to the north, a portion of it ends up in the ditch on Forest Road. It all combines together. It goes through a, a two pipes that end up in the wetland on uh, in Forest Lakes. Our ponds are designed to hold all the additional runoff, and, and in this case, more, because uh, we're, when we're discharging to a wetland, even in the smaller storms, we can't discharge more, or actually less, because we can't dry them out either, um, than is currently going there. So in inherently, when you get to the bigger storms, it ends up being less water. So the higher storms will be more protection to the wetlands and to the homeowners because of the drainage. So those ponds will hold that additional amount as well. Um, as far as some of the localized flooding problems in Forest Lakes, um, that's, that's not a condition that's going to change by these developments. Uh, I believe there's uh, some faulty drainage in the subdivision itself that, that we can't fix, nor can the city of Oldsmar, from my understanding. Um, and the same is going to hold true for the South, but, but uh, that's where we stand on this, that we, we cannot add any water to the system. So there won't be any additional flooding going on. Yeah, and the ponds that you're talking about are the ponds that are associated with your development only. Yeah. Yes, the two ponds on site. Okay. They'll hold all the water on site. Of, of your development? Of our development, yes. And okay. um, they'll, only be re they'll only release at the existing conditions or less, the rest will absorb it to the ground. That's how they're designed. Okay. You next. Just wanted to also comment for the record, there was a question about offsite wetland mitigation. Uh, we have no offsite wetland mitigation proposed. There is a 0.1 acre area that's isolated at the south property line uh, that will be uh, removed as part of the project and replaced primarily with a stormwater pond. 
that'll be both within that current wetland area and beyond it, but there is a corner of a building that will be in the northeast corner of that little area. Uh, Swift mud does not require mitigation for that. We do have to provide for stormwater capacity uh, to, comp to pr continue to provide for the historic storage. Uh, so we will be addressing that, but there is not an offsite uh, wetland mitigation requirement, uh, nor is there any need to do so. Uh, we are preserving the jurisdictional wetlands within the property, as you saw in Marie's exhibit, and plus on our plan, I believe it was 4.4 acres, and we are providing the upland buffer as required by both Swift Mud and by the city to provide that buffer zone and, and area uh, to preserve those wetland areas, and that'll be held in a conservation easement uh, to the benefit of the city or another nonprofit uh, entity that uh, is typically Tampa Bay Conservancy or something to that effect uh, usually holds a, that as a way to keep that legally binding on the property in the future homeowners association. Okay. So and I know this will all be put in place. And I know this is a, a land use discussion, but we did want to kind of address the um, drainage because it does affect it and it affects it either way, whether we do this or not. But also just to make a point, the pond will also provide water quality components um, as part of the design, correct? That's correct. That, that, uh, so it meets water quality standards. That's really not going on there right now currently. Right. Correct. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Yes, Mr. Beaverland. Is it our turn? Uh, um, additional comments? If there questions? are no other questions of staff or the applicant. Any other questions of staff? I have a question for s applicant. For the applicant. Okay. Which? Um, a couple of the residents, Ruth and Tyson, both brought up a good point, the um, traffic. I know that everybody is concerned, including me, about the drainage. And I know that that's something that we have to deal with in the, the future plan. with the site plan. But this does directly, this right. this land use does have direct impact on the, tra uh, the traffic. And I'm, I'm a little confused as when Pete came up. The 1.6%, and you said it was 8%, that is the increased... 0.8%. Point eight, right? Mm -hmm. It's one point six if it was five per acre. It's point eight if it's ten per acre. Inc no, increase. All the way around. Because what I'm a little confused around, about yeah. is these residents say that they're already waiting five light changes, and you're saying it's just this mine, you know, this small yeah. percentage of impact. So I just need clarification. Yeah, and I'm, I apologize if I was confusing on that. The it, the 54 units produce uh, 0.58 percent of the traffic relative to the traffic on Tampa Road. And it's 1.6% of the traffic that's on Forest Lake. So it's giving an order of magnitude on that. The, um, so those percentages are just what that amount of homes will be in the grand scheme of all the traffic. Correct. Okay. The, the actual trips is 28 peak hour trips. Are there so any that's like, it's plans? basically a car are, every two minutes. Okay. Are there any plans to make to ease that traffic burden if it's already a problem? If it's already they're waiting five five lights in order to get, is there anything that's going to help them, or is it just you're just saying that's just a little bit that's going to it, impact? It's it's such a small impact that uh, that it would not require offsite traffic improvements. Obviously, we've got to do access improvements for you know basically you know to to get into the property, but it, it's not big enough that it triggers any. The proportionate share is so so minimal that it wouldn't trigger any kind of improvements offsite. Hmm. It's, it's, re it's really, uh, it's a background traffic situation that has to be addressed by Pinellas County as, as, yes. as being the So it's route. already a problem. Yes. Well, they're obviously, obviously it's already a problem. And I guess I would have to ask someone else who, those roads, are they county, are they our roads? They're, it's a county road. Forest it's, Lakes is a county road. Forest, forest is a county road? Forest Lakes is a county forest road. Forest Lakes is a county road. Forest Lakes, but what about forest? State. City. 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 Forest is city. The city. And Pine is city. Forest right. Lakes is county. Mm -hmm. That's right. And the problem is on forest. Correct. Kind of forest. The problem is on, hold on forest. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Not from the crowd, please. I'm just curious. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. That clarifies it. Yeah, like I said, like I said it's, it's 28 trips per peak hour, so it's only it's only a, you know, basically a car every two minutes. And just, very, very negligible. And just kind of to close the loop, it's 28 peak at this changed land use, but what do, I don't know if you have that number, but even without the change, is it then 14? Is it that, I, is it that yeah, simple? Yeah, I mean, it's, that's based on the 54 units. I mean, it's going to, I didn't do the number for based on 30, on the 30 units, it could go there. But I mean, it's roughly half. So, you know, if you took half of it, that'd be 14 already allowed under the land use, and so we'd be adding 14 more. Okay, during peak. 
Or be, yeah, day, daily traffic would be a total of 316, but that's spread out over a 24 hour period. Good. And who does that, that study? Who does this study? Uh, those, are, those are based on the Institute of Traffic Engineers. They're the, the national accrediting association for traffic engineers and the expert in that field. So our, our numbers come from their data. It's the same data that the county and the city use for their analysis. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yes, and there are both people that could argue both sides of those right. numbers. And I know. That, you know, it, it's whatever just- Whatever way you want to go. Whatever way, we, yeah, we all know that. Any, uh, any other uh, questions of staff or the applicant? I have a comment, okay, and I believe my comments, it's a comment that has come up. It stop me if I'm wrong. Well, we just want to go ahead and close yeah, the we're, public uh, portion. We're going to discuss, but. And then take a motion and then discuss the motion. Yeah, if we're okay. done with staff and. and I'll, uh, yeah, I'll okay. make a motion. Hold on, i got to close the public hearing. Okay, close the public hearing. No, any other questions for staff or applicant? No other questions. I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. I need a motion. Yeah. Motion for the next for this for the next meeting I need a, I got a motion and a, do I need a sec I need a second to approve no this just to motion. move it forward to discussion oh. and then you would be approving the ordinance on first reading to approve right. on the first reading but this is just a motion and a second to discuss it to and discuss then. I'll second so we can discuss motion and a second discussion the I say this humbly and I know I'm going to irritate somebody out there I don't do this to irritate anybody out there because I have friends out there I say this because no matter what happens, something's going to be built somewhere out there, and it's going to affect all y'all somehow. We can't stop that. This council can't stop that. Now, we can stop from building uh, 18 stories out there and 200 people who live in 18 stories. Now, we can do that. We can do that. But I want to say something from my heart that I consider you people a part of Oldsmar, of what Oldsmar is, okay? I don't say this to irritate anybody. I moved here almost 50 years ago in this beautiful city, and it was an incredible place where my kids could run up on, down the beach and run till they dropped in 1967. And there was times when I walked out my front door because we were right on, we walked out our front door, we walked across the street from the Tampa way. Bay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we walked out our front door into Tampa Bay. <laughs> but that, that, that's, that, that was our problem because we bought, we bought there, okay? We, we bought there. But I still wouldn't change. I, I, I would buy it again. Okay. There was times, maybe once or maybe every two months, I walk out my front door, and I see two or three headed deer in, in our front, out on the beach, and that was incredible to see that. We had eagles that flew around in front of our house and and hunted in our front of our house on the bay. Okay, north of Tampa Road was absolutely nothing. There was one building sitting there. And if it was there today, it would be right in the middle of Forest Lakes Boulevard. It was a little restaurant. Mm -hmm. Heidelberg. It was Heidelberg. called the Heidelberg. Beautiful little place. I used to go out there and sit underneath those century oaks because I loved it. There were, there were fire trails out there, fire breaks. And my beautiful wife, on, on the weekend, we would do this with, with our four kids. But during the week, my beautiful wife would fix us a lunch and we'd get in my pickup and we'd take those fire trails all the way back to the preserves, all the way back to North Forest Lakes subdivision. Yes. And we would see, maybe if we were lucky, we'd see nine or ten head of deer. The big ponds out there, we'd see the alligators. If we were lucky, we would see a bobcat, many gopher turtles, eagles, a lot of hawks. And we'd spend the day out there driving around, and we loved it. It was part of uh, it was part of our existence here in the city of Oldsmore. Then in the alert in, in the early in the early eighties, a big bank bought Forest Lakes, all that property out there, and pretty soon development came in. We didn't get the deers anymore in our front yard or on the beach. We couldn't go to the fire lanes. But you know what? You had just as much right 
to move to this city as my beautiful and wife did. You had that right to move to the city of Osmond. You helped make the city what it is today. We had a mayor here in 1974 that when she moved into town, she wanted to build a wall around this city. So you can't do that. Just because you found utopia doesn't mean other people doesn't have the same right to live in what I consider utopia, the city of Oldsmore. We're not perfect. We're not. But we've tried to build this city in a way where, where it's livable and, and you can be proud of the city. And then after a while, we, the, the fire lanes that were left that we could travel was was uh, Fountains 1 and Fountains 2, and pretty soon we couldn't, we couldn't travel them anymore. But we welcomed them. In fact, I was mayor at the time. I think I went to every house in Fountains 1, and I went to every house in Fountains 2, and I knocked on their door, and I welcomed them to the city of Osmore as a mayor, and I gave them a, a, a city package. Because I wanted them here. We have friends there because they helped make part of this city. And then the woods came in. And then the preserves came in. Now, I did fight and, and upset some of the city staff, I guess, but I did fight the, uh, Westminster. the Westminster. Westminster for over a year and, and, and cost them uh, over a million dollars in attorney's fees, but it came, it, it came to a point where they were suing, they were suing individuals of this city, and I could not allow that to happen. They can sue me to hell and back. But I could not let them sue the city in, uh, residents. It, 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 it would have broken them. They would have lost their homes, and I couldn't do that. So, but I'll tell you what we did do. We got $55,000 for each one of our grammar schools and $35,000 for our library out of them. So what I'm trying to say is that I love the Blue Jays too. In fact, I just wrote a story. In a magazine about a Blue Jay. Yes, you did. After we lost our son. I don't see the deer anymore. Now, y'all still see deer. I don't see deer anymore, but y'all still see the deer because I got friends in Forest Lakes that they got deer paths in the back of their yard and they have to watch what they grow out there because yes. the deers eat what they... Yes. But we welcomed you here because you... because Osmar needed you. Okay, this development, I understand. It's a new development. I don't want anything there. Something's going to go there. I just hope we can make the, we can answer some of your concerns, and that's what I brought up about the drainage, is that there's going to be some good people that's going to, you're going to have bad, I can't get out of, I can't get out of my street anymore on St. Petersburg Drive for the traffic. <laughs> I used to consent in the middle of Tampa Road for an hour and never have a car come by me. How many lanes was it? Two. Two <laughs> with no shoulders. <laughs> so the traffic is an irritant. I go down Bayview to get on Tampa Road, just going to go to the post office, and I sit there for eight minutes for that stupid light. Yes. I hate that light. I hate that light, too. I hate Bruce, absolutely. Hate that light. Eight minutes I sat there. I did too. I had to U-turn and get out of there. It's ridiculous. We need to isn't check it? that. So, just avoid so it. red lights, I hate <laughs> it. I do too. But we're all affected by it. I, I mean, not. come down Forest Lakes Boulevard now. I, I I don't even go that way anymore to Tampa Road because you sat there. Anyway, I just want to let you know that these things happen and you get good people there. I hope everybody understands what I just said. Speech here. <laughs> I'd like to say something sure. too. I've been here since 1970. And when there were, were there 1,200, were there as much as 1,200 people in 70? I don't think so. No, the car that passed them after the hour? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. In 1970, there was a little less than nine, nine, 900 people. Okay. I anyway. won. By, I, I got. Thank you. I got. I got 280 votes and won. <laughs> <laughs>
at least they were voting. Uh, but but anyway, uh, we came in 70, and my father, I live a block and a half from here. I live in the old part of town. And all these old homes, and then my father built our house in 73. Oh, everybody was up in arms, you know. Oh, no, 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 no. Because everybody had two lots, you know. I mean, they have a house, and then they have a lot, and all that stuff. Oh, they, boy, they were not happy about us at all. And um, it took a little while, but they finally welcomed us with open arms. And, and that's just the way it is, you know. I mean, you... Nobody wants nobody wants stuff around them, but it can't stay that way, you know. And and we promised you guys a few years back when we bought that property there would be no gas station oh, that's there. Not, that's not the property we're talking. We're about. talking about the north. We're talking about right the north piece, oh, not yeah. the corner. Well, the church. Still, yeah. Yes, but we promised them that nothing like that would be there. And so, and we've kept our promise and. Gee, when people buy property, they they have a right to develop it, you know, just like One you guys other thing, did. Mayor, I used to walk out my front door and look to the west. I could see Moccasin Creek, beautiful. Mm -hmm. And after a while, I walked out my front door and I had a three-story apartment, uh, yes. townhouses. Yes. Three-story townhouses yes. that I couldn't look to the west anymore. Right. Council Lady uh, uh, Norris walks out her back door, and that's all she sees is these three-story townhouses. Mm -hmm. So I would have loved to have bought that piece of land, but I couldn't afford it. Yeah, exactly. So uh, it, it, it's, it's... But, but, but I, I welcome them there, and I got some good friends that live there. But I'm not quite through. Uh, when, when we moved in, you didn't see any egrets or any ibises or anything. There was nothing in the neighborhood because they all lived in East Lake Oaks. Then East Lake Oaks was developed. Now I've got ibises and egrets and, and raccoons and you name it. You know, so they've been displaced. And, but that's, there's so many people in this world who've got to have some place to live. I'm sorry. Discussion? Linda? Um, discussion before we vote? Yep, that's what, we're doing. That's what this is. Oh, this is okay. a discussion or? Okay, I have a question for Tom. Mm -hmm. The vote is going to be to allow the land rezoning. No, no, from, land no. Use. just the land, land use. use. Land use from, not rezoning, right. Land use from basically the bottom line is from five per acre to ten per acre, basically, right? That's the density we're talking about. We're talking about changing it from residential low and preservation to residential low medium and preservation. Right, and we can't put any conditions on it. Like if I'm concerned about the, the impact of the traffic, because I don't need a traffic study to tell me that there's 54 townhomes. There could be 1,500 square feet to 1,800 square feet. There could be two cars per household. That's another 100 cars going on to the problem that they already have. So if, if, if I'm against it, I would just vote no. That's correct. It, because I wouldn't be able to say I want to make sure that there's things that help the traffic flow. Is that correct? You would you would vote it down. That's okay. correct. Tom, that's it. I have a question before I just mention a few concerns so we can move forward. How does this one affect the other two in the entire grand scheme of things? If we say voted no on this, are they, based on their contract, um, are they not able to move forward at all? Good question. Um, I don't, I've, I haven't seen their contracts. I don't okay. really know the answer to that question, okay. but you know, one is built upon the other okay. and, and um, maybe they can get up and address that issue. And I would I'd assume that the answer is, is if the land use doesn't pass, the zoning doesn't pass, then they'll probably walk. Okay. Um, just some of the concerns I had. My initial concern when this first came before us was that the planning board, all six members voted no. Um, Unfortunately, there wasn't like an explanation as to why, but that was something that I, I think I can tell you that mm -hmm. because he said that he said that they gave them all of this at one time. Mm -hmm. They gave them all the explanations of all of the, the whole deal at one time. And I think it was too much to absorb in one meeting. It would have just, you know, it'd been nice to have some explanation there um, 
because, you know, obviously we look to the planning board to kind of give us some recommendations on things. Um, so that was my first initial concern. Obviously, drainage is a concern. I live on this side of town. The nice thing is, though, if I don't want to take St. Pete Drive, I can take Bayview. I can take right. Park. I have many exits to get to work or to the grocery store. With these units, you only really have two roads to get out of there, Forest and Pine. So I understand the concerns there. I use Forest Lakes a lot to go to West Chase in that area, and it's mm -hmm. hellacious because it's a two-lane, and I know that's not really a city issue, it's a county issue, and that Aren't could they be... are planning on widening it? It could, be, it could be years away. We have to be, you know, just realistic about that. So, you know, I understand the concern of adding additional cars, um, because I don't want to sit in it either. I already hate it enough if I have to go to West Chase at 530 or... You know. So I do have concerns there, and I also have Jerry's concern about that once we vote on this, we don't really get to see it again. So we don't really get to, you know speak about the drainage further or the site plan, things of that nature. Um, so I, I do have some concerns there, but I also, you know, I see the value having additional rooftops in the city, homes for people to live in, and the new restaurants that we have and the redevelopment that's occurring at Forest Lakes Plaza. I could see that these houses would be great for that redevelopment that's occurring to support those businesses and restaurants. So, um, you know, I see some positives, but I also have some kind of unaddressed concerns as well. And that's... I think we we all do. Mm -hmm. so. Any other? And I'll just conclude. I mean, I, a lot of everything has been said. I, I think of all of us up here. I'm the only one that lives on the north side. I was, you know, yeah, you know, you, are. Yeah. you know, I, I sympathize with you. I'd like to have two exits to come out of my right. my community. To be honest with you, I, for oh, yeah. for those that don't know, I live in Bay Arbor, and um, I can I can sympathize <laughs> with your pain. Um, but, you know, the other side of that is I did choose to move there, um, and I really choose uh, to follow on what Mr. Beaverland was saying. Uh, <laughs> I moved here in 82, a young pup compared to, to Mr. Beaverland, but uh, Mr. Dirt. <laughs> I lived in town and country uh, in a trailer park with my wife at 18 years old, and I remember the day we uh, went to the beach, and I drove through Oldsmore, and I thought, Oh my gosh. <laughs> OMG, we are never going to get through this place. You know, I felt like I was driving, you know, to the end of the world. And, uh, and then to, to come for full circle, uh, I was a civil engineer for many years and worked on the drainage design for the sixth laning of Tampa Road. So I've kind of seen it from its, its small time to its new. Um, and I tell this story um, often, both here and, and in public, um, that when I moved into the area and, and began working and lived in various areas, Palm Harbor. Um, Oldsmar was the city that, that people didn't want to acknowledge that they were from, uh, except Jerry. But, um, and me. And, yeah, and Janice. Mm -hmm. um, but people used to say that they weren't. They lived in East Lake Oaks, or I mean East Lake Woodlands, and they would say that they were from Palm Harbor when we know that their address is Oldsmar. Um, you definitely have some concerns. Um, we've heard you. Um, on the, both the traffic components and again being living in Bay Arbor I certainly know that and there I think there are things I can't commit to anything but there are certainly people that we can talk to um, about some of the traffic you know the traffic on on Tampa Road and Forest Lakes is just it's horrendous for all of us whether this thing goes in or not it's horrendous um, you know they've tried to do some of the, the timing and things like that but um, you know, it's the nature of the beast, and, uh, you know, we definitely have concerns. It's not a land use issue, but the, regardless of what goes in there, the drainage has to be addressed satisfactorily to both staff and to all the permitting agencies involved. I've done drainage design on many, many, many a project, and oftentimes it's surprising that although the applicant can't fix problems downstream or uh, other problems that are there, as he mentioned, uh, by the design of the stormwater facility on his site, they actually can control the water and they've got to hold the peak and they've got to hold the peak in their pond. Um, so you don't just have the water running freely all over the place. It's a, it's more of a controlled system. Definitely a concern. Um, he did address the wetland issue. Um, and just for clarity, if there are wetland impacts, they can be mitigated outside the area, outside the area being, and I forget how big the drainage basin is, but um, sometimes they have mitigation banks you can mitigate for property in Brandon if it's within the same watershed. And the watershed for Tampa Bay is, is fairly large, um, so you can mitigate in, in other areas. But, um, you know, there's going to be plantings, there's going to be littorals. Again, and having said that I live in Bay Arbor and, and a, a lot of people here tonight are part of the, you know, the new, I, you know, the, the north, there's the north side of Tampa Road and the south side of Tampa Road. And, um, 
you know, I don't, mine went in, and that was the last one in 2000, but I still to this day, you know, have 8, 10, 12 deer running around, um, birds, uh, you know, like crazy, um, peacocks, the dreaded turkeys that attack your car, um, and things like that. So, I mean, they do displace, but I mean, I think ultimately, you know, um, I, I like it. I mean, the deer, you know, they thought my greyhound at the time was a deer and, you know, they would come up to it. So, as Jerry said, we, we do uh, make progress. Or what did you say, 900 was the population back when you stood in the road? Well, I don't know why you did that, but that's you, I guess. But um, And our, our population now, our nighttime population, and Bruce can correct me if I'm way, way wrong, but our, our nighttime population is about 14,000 people now. Um, and our daytime population, I exaggerate a little 55, bit. 55,000. I say 60, but, you know, 55, 60. But our daytime population... <laughs> It's about 60,000 people. So you see how many people, that doesn't count the people that merely just pass through our lovely city, uh, hopefully not speeding. But, um, you know, the businesses that are coming here um, wouldn't be coming here if not only Oldsmar wasn't a great place, but uh, I go, I sit on the PPC. I was on the board of directors of the PSTA. And uh, as part of the transit issue that's going on, one of the things that continues to be brought up is that we're, we're an employment hub. We're an employment hub, one, because we have the places to employ the people, but the other part is we're part of the workforce. We have uh, our incomes, we have, you know, you know, higher than average incomes in the city of Oldsmar, um, and so we're a great employment source. And I think, I didn't talk to the applicant about the price point of the homes, we can address that later, but I think this kind of fits in with um, you know, what Oldsmar, what we as council and past council have, have envisioned. And as uh, Jerry said and others have said, something is going to go into that property. And we've, we've addressed this issue e even on this current council with other properties. And at some point, you got to decide when it's something that's, um, you know, when is the right time to pull the trigger on something good for the city. We just went through this with another development. And I think the new development is three times better or will be three times better than what originally was going to go in there. Um, of course, we got opposition to that too, and everybody wishes that nothing would be there, but I don't know if anybody's got a sack of money to buy that piece of property, but it's a public entity that owns it, and, and uh, it's developable, so something is, is going to go in there. I don't, I don't really have anything else. I think staff and As long and the as they meet the criteria. Yeah, and I mean, we, we, you know, we put a lot of faith in our staff um, to, to coordinate with the applicant and to coordinate with the agencies and to make sure um, you know, that things are as good as we can get it. And the traffic issue, again, it's, you know, it's a standard uh, numbers that they use for the different land uses. And, you know, he's indicated that it's basically a 0.8 increase from what could go in there now. Doesn't make things any better um, for any of us, but you know, Jerry would probably say you guys didn't make it any better for him. You know, back in the day, or you know, I didn't make it any better for you. And, and you did with your friendship. Yeah, and uh, so at any rate, that's um, that's the that's the item. I don't have any other questions. I don't have any discussion. Um, anybody else have any? I just want to make one point, regardless of how this vote goes, because I don't know how it's going to go. Would it be possible to maybe add? Exit, uh, you know, additional. That's a site. Exit. That would be a site. Oh, that's, plan a site issue. Plan. that's a site plan issue. And so this is just like kind of like a. This is just what they idea. Can do. This is what they can do with the land. I got you. Okay. Thank and you, Tom. And is there no way to have it come before us again, or I mean, to have like you'll to have, have a second a reading second of this. Reading. Okay, but of this, like of a site plan approval. Not unless you change the code. Okay. So the answer is is no, not for this project. Okay. And, and this is a That's separate a item. Point, I can tell me to shut up if I'm wrong, but as part of the zoning, the zoning is going to make it a PUD, which really, as we saw with uh, uh, Wellington Estates, it really puts another level of checks and balances to it, if you will, where that if what they've proposed and they, if they deviate from that, correct me if I'm wrong, they do have to come back before it. Not if they move a tree or they move a parking space, but if they, you know, substantially deviate from what's there, that that and that's another issue, but that particular component does bring it back before us. That's why right. we have to rely on staff. Right. Because if they do Is that deviate, correct, Tom? If they correct. do deviate Thank from it. Yes. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Please call the roll. Councilmember Beaverland? Yes. Councilmember Miller? Aye. I'm sorry. Vice Mayor Miller? <laughs> Aye. Councilmember Mickey? No. Councilmember Norris? No. 
Mayor Beavis? Aye. First reading of Ordinance 2013-16, amending the land use from residential low and preservation to residential low, medium and preservation, Tuscany Woods, North Parcel, located at the northwest corner of Forest Road and Pine Avenue North, passes with three votes for and two against, Council Member Mickey and Council Member Norris descending. Okay, so we'll move on to item number 